Hi everyone, it's June 20th and it's Tuesday and you're here at the Chaos Community Weekly Hangout, Weekly Call, whatever we call it. Um, quick reminder, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind as you interact with us. And um, if you don't want to have your camera on, of course, that's completely fine. We do not care here. We're super easy. You can feel free to just chat in the side if you don't want to turn your mic on or if you don't have a mic. Uh, completely fine. We don't care. It's all good. Here's the minutes. If you would add your name and tell us if you'd rather cook at home or eat at a restaurant. And I realize I did not put mine in here, so I will add me. Absolutely eat out every time, hands down. Hate cooking. I'm terrible at it. Although I did make pork chops last night, which is great for a vegetarian because I can't taste stuff. So it's like eat at your own risk family and no one got sick and no one died. So I'm considering that a big win actually. Yeah, good job. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I, I don't cook meat super often, but when I do, it's it's always risky. It makes It makes mealtime a little more exciting if you don't really know if you're gonna survive it. Yeah, we don't know. People might good. die, yeah, I suppose yeah. so. You might get food poisoning, you don't know. It's like those jelly beans that are the, like sometimes they taste like puke and stuff. Have you seen those? What are those called? I know what you're talking about, but I yeah, bean boozled. That's it. So like you don't know what you're getting, and sometimes it's a yummy flavor, and sometimes it's a really disgusting flavor, like grass or puke or spoiled milk or something. So it's always exciting to get those those jelly beans. Yes, Birdie bots every flavor beans. Ooh, that sounds good, Benya. Yummy, or maybe not yummy, as the case may be. Um, jumping into our, to actually our agenda, we can do stuff today. It's fine. We we'll talk about jelly beans all day. Um, this, if you have not seen this video, we're gonna play it because it is amazing, amazing. So I'm just, it's, oh, it's not, um, it's not long. It's 45 seconds, but this is the wrap up for ChaosCon, and I hope this works. So everybody can still see it, right? Can you hear it? No, we don't need to replay it. Sorry. Okay. Oh my gosh. I I'm like so sad I missed it. I that video is amazing. Like I wanted to be there. That is so great. So um, I know they had some um, professionals come in and work on that video. So I just think that was tremendous use of the money. Like that just blew me away. So congratulations to every single person. I think there's a few of you on this call um, that worked on this on the conference. It just looked absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, it brings a little tear to my eye, actually. Like, I, I'm so excited that that's part of our community. Like, oh my gosh. Um, Basayo, I see you're on here. Do you want to say anything about the event? You absolutely do not have to. But if there's anything you want, because I know you were on the planning committee. Um, so if there's anything you want to just say about the event as a wrap up. Okay, um, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, Chaos Coin Africa 2023 was so amazing. We had um, so many brilliant speakers. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that worked. Thank you, Elizabeth, for all the work you did and helping us with the website and everything and getting everything running. Thank you to all our speakers. I think we have some of them here. We have Ethion, we have Desmond. They spoke at um, Chaos Con 2023. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the money spent. And we really appreciate it. We can't wait till 2024 to have another one. And I know we have so many newcomers and hopefully we get to see them around soon. So thank you all. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone. Oh, what a good event. It just makes my heart happy so, so much. You have no idea. So awesome job to everyone. And yes, if you do, if those of us who have been in the community for a little while, if you do see some more newcomers coming into the channels and saying hello, please welcome them. Please make sure that they um, can find their way. Um, I know Mary Blessings had a few um, requests for tour guides. And so, um, yeah, just everybody, you know, everybody can chip in and just make sure um, our new folks feel welcome and can find their way. So. Any questions, comments, anything else about Chaos Con Africa? I put in the chat. Do we know how the images are licensed? I don't know that. I already posted it to our LinkedIn, so I hope that's not okay. a problem. <laughs> um, I imagine that we we should be able to use that. Like that was kind of the whole point of it. I think is okay. to I'm use it. But that's a valid question, though. I will just double check. <laughs> double check. I think we can use them. We can. Okay. Since we paid for them, we can use them. And I think everybody agreed to having their videos taken. But excellent. Yeah, we need Thank you for that. I'm I'm really glad to hear that, especially since I already did put it on LinkedIn. <laughs> so I don't want to go to jail for that. Um, <laughs> This is a valid point, Matt. I probably I didn't even think about it, so I'm glad you did. I'm glad. So well, I much. think because I think um, the Sloan Foundation is going to put it in their newsletter as well. Nice. Yeah, and I'm guessing they'll use one of the images or two of the images in their newsletter out to all their grantees and folks. So fantastic. There's also um, do they Matt? Do they need? There's a link to all the images in a folder. I provided that link to, to Liz. Excellent. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Excellent. Love it. Anything else on ChaosCon Africa? Okay. Um, this is just a quick announcement. If you are interested in learning about or becoming a DEI event badger, you can join us on June 27th at 12 o'clock US Central Chicago time. That'll be right after the DEI working group meeting. So if you attend that meeting, you can just stick around and learn how to be a DEI event badger. You do not have to register or anything like that. You can just show up. Um, and if you want an invitation, actually, I don't even know if I put it on the calendar yet. I don't think that date's right either. Nice, awesome. <laughs> the 27th great. is a week from today. Oh, well, maybe maybe I did that on purpose. Maybe I did do yeah. it. So it's not after the meeting. DEI meeting. Oh. That's all. Okay. It's after is this it, meeting. Is it on the calendar? Can someone look? Um, you see it? Oh yeah, it is. It's right at yeah. It's after this meeting. Not oh, the meeting. okay. Well, go me. I can't even remember if I did or not. Yep. That's how my brain is. I don't yep, know. Yep. <laughs> it's there. Okay, perfect. So it's um after this meeting, not the DEI meeting, but it's after this meeting next week. Next week. There you go. Um, any questions on that? Again, I'm happy to send you uh, add you as an like a, an attendee to that meeting and send you an invite so you can add it specifically to your calendar if you want. So just let me know, no biggie, or you or not, you can just show up. Do you want to post something like that maybe in one of our Slack channels? I, I don't know how many people you like. Just is more better. I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't matter, but yeah, I probably should uh, promote that a little more. I don't think I've even posted it in the DEI okay. thing, so I'll post that. Actually, I'll put it in the minutes. Um, AI Elizabeth on Slack. Sock on Slack. There we go. Okay, perfect. So the next one is. Um, just a reminder from App Ecosystem Group. I think they do have a meeting today, but it will be the last meeting um, until until September. So if you um, had planned on attending that or were curious about that, you should come today or you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> so <clears throat> questions about that? Nope. Um, I think we decided earlier today that we are gonna go ahead and cancel all the meetings um two weeks from now so there's any meeting that are bi-weekly that are happening today i.e metrics models and then of course app ecosystems already 
taking a break. Um, but just two weeks from now, there's going to be no chaos meetings because it is a U.S. holiday. That's also the newcomer hangout. It's newcomer thing. hangout. Yep. And I will post that too. I'm going to take everything off the calendar and I'll post. I'll post it in. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do AI Elizabeth post on Slack newsletter. Cool. Oh God, I'm the one with all the action items. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't mind at all. Um, the next item on here is, and the last item, unless people have other things to talk about. Um, I I had, want, oh, go ahead. I had one thing just kind of as you're talking about like posting in Slack. So you do those um, summaries in discourse. Mm -hmm. Are they also in Slack or could you like cross post them? I just think they're really handy. I, I try to, sometimes I forget. Um, do you, usually I post a link to the summary and the YouTube video, but mm -hmm. would it be more helpful to just post the actual summary in Slack also? Yeah, so that's what I was through? thinking. Like you could just read it in Slack. Okay. Okay. And you just said there's a web hook that could do that. So like, would it be Venya that you just like post it in discourse and it takes the text or does it just like cross-reference the link? Uh, discourse basically considers a specific forum section uh, to be a RSS feed. So you can webhook it into Slack as an RSS feed. Okay, so it'll post the content then. Correct. Right, right. Well, on. it won't post the content. It will post the established excerpt of the content, which in Discord's path, is I think it's the first 300 words. Okay. And then I'll say see more. Okay. Actually, 300 would probably be pretty close to the, <laughs> that'd be probably more yeah. than enough for the totality of the summary. I, again, I don't know how much it is. It's been years since I've done any implementation similar so to that. Sure, but so for sure, you know 300, says. exactly 300. <laughs> uh, you I'm also know me in numbers. I care more <laughs> about the trends than I do the numbers for a reason. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'll look into that if there's a way. Otherwise, I can just copy paste. It's not okay. a big deal either way. Um, yeah, it, it's just an RSS feed, as I understand okay. it. Okay, cool. I'll look into it. That was it for me on that one. Um, I'm actually gonna put this in here. Um, maybe summary. Oops. AI Elizabeth, here we go. Post in Slack as well as this. and look into integration. I have looked into integration before. Um, I didn't think I got very far though, so I'll, I'll resurface that again. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this next one is from me. Um, this has been on my mind for a while and um, kind of just in my, in my grand plan in my head of community building and making things better for all of us. Um, I really want second half of 2023 to focus on this issue right here of better surfacing, tracking, and, and especially recognizing non-code contributions since they are such a huge part of what we do here at Chaos. Like I would say that most of our contributions here are not software related. And, and right now we're not doing a great job of this. Um, we really don't do it, to be fair. We, we don't do it in, in any kind of systemic way. Um, we, we do the chaotic of the week, which is designed to to recognize and, and celebrate um, some of our contributors, but um, it's really not enough. And so uh, this is such a hard problem to solve. And I, I would really just wanted to open it up to the community because I am kind of out of ideas, to be perfectly frank. And we, we've thought about um, doing so. Uh, one example of a community that does do this well is the Drupal community. And I believe they have a system in place where if you, if you as a person um, do contribute in, an, in a non-software, a non-code way, you can open an issue and I think they use GitLab, but you can open an issue and essentially, you know, assign it to yourself. And I think you close the issue right away and it gets tagged with what kind of contribution it was. Um, and I think that that's a good, a good starting point, but I also think that um, it, it's problematic in a couple of ways, only because it, it relies on the person to kind of self-recognize. And, and that seems weird for some people to do that. 
And then the second thing that I, I kind of have issue with is that it, it gets still counted as a code contribution. So it's still going through a PR system. It's still going through, you know, some kind of, of API through GitLab or GitHub. And I, I just, I know you can pull them out and, and separate them and filter them based on labels and this and that, but um, if you're aggregating, it's just gonna look like a code contribution. And so I don't know, I don't know what a good solution is and I would love to open it up to the community. So I'm gonna stop talking and see if y'all have any, any ideas off the top of your head. Um, if you wanna think about it, we can also bring it up next week as well. Uh, Elizabeth? Yes. Yeah, I think we discussed on this issue on uh, the last metrics. I think you, Math, and myself, we had a discussion on this. I think Sean was also in that call. I've just forgotten the name of the metrics. I mentioned that there are a couple of techniques that we could use to capture non-technical contributions using natural language processing. But I think Sean was saying that the existing Argo tools do not support that. But if we still want to go ahead, I mean, I don't mind to mentor any person who is a data scientist in the community, just to give them some hints how to, to go about that. But there is, there is a handful of techniques in data science that we could use to capture communications across different platforms to see the, the prevalence of how people are contributing. Truth so be have... told, um, that's just a community intelligence platform. Like they do that out of the box. Come again, please. That's a community intelligence platform. They do that out of the box. Yeah, we can do, we can implement our own system. Is I mean, it's, uh, if anybody who is interested for mentoring ship, we can give them, you know, guidance and help to implement something. We have done some, kind of plugin with Slack and integrations. So it's always uh, possible. Any yeah, enthusiastic person who is, I mean, interested in software engineering, especially in data science, like natural language processing, I can help them to, to mentor them to do this kind of work. I guess my building on this, my first thought, and maybe it's a question, for you, Elizabeth, is like, what would be maybe a first thing that we could recognize as opposed to saying we recognize all, all everything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm trying to balance between um, where we're at now and, and recognizing absolutely everything like on a daily basis and just the amount of work or detail that that would require to do that, um, knowing that you know, there's a limited amount of time that like somebody like yourself has, or just trying to balance all of these things. So like, what would be a, maybe a f something that would be a candidate to start in terms of recognition, like events? That's what I was thinking. Like, um, I, I mean, we posted the, the list of the chaos con Africa planning committee in our, in our minutes here, and they're on the website under on the chaos kind africa website but like is that enough you know or I, I maybe it is maybe it is enough i just i feel like those kinds of contributions often get buried and they're not really we're not keeping track anywhere and maybe we don't have to but um i just kind of feel like i don't have a good um a good handle on how many contributors we have helping with events who those folks are consistently you know things like that we don't have like a an event planning team that's um really in place every time i mean we kind of do for chaos con but it changes you know and it it's not it's not consistent every time so maybe um, it could be instead of like um chaotic of the week like chaos recognition of the week so or or we could just say like chaotic of the week is the chaos con africa event organizing team you know what i mean and we recognize the entire team that way or um you know something it's still just it's still just weekly um but the chaotic of the week is just one person at a time which is kind of 
it would take a long time to recognize everybody. <laughs> um, it just a, that was a, a, just a thought. I don't know if that's a great thought, but instead of a chaotic of the week, it's you know chaos recognition of the week or something like that. And it could be one person. It could be a group of people. It could be, well, I don't know, whatever. Do we have gamified Slack statuses? I, you know, we really don't. And we don't have any like badging on Slack. We don't have any kind of anything like that. Um, all that stuff is available in discourse, but this community does not, has not really embraced discourse as, as we thought they might. Um, so I don't know if it, like, I don't even know if half the people in, in our Slack community are even on discourse. But discourse makes oh. it super easy to identify and recognize and give badges for folks. So perhaps it's something similar. Yeah. Perhaps what we can do instead is we can use Matt's idea for the recognition of the week, but we have actually schedule a non-coding AMA specifically on discourse and then use that event-based AMA to adapt people's uh, use of discourse and at the same time allow us to award badges. So the idea would be, for instance, if I'm a non-coding member, right? Um, we set up an event once per month with the chaotic that has been identified to do an AMA. And we launch it as a post on discourse. And then everyone comments and replies. We have a thread where I'm actually going through and doing those answers or whatever. And by virtue of that discussion, we are accruing points based upon our participation. And you can award badges based upon what points go where. And that would just be an event. Um, you can start that monthly and it all you really need to do is set up in discourse what badges get awarded and how. Yeah, I wish I wish Slack had something similar, but I don't think well, does anybody know? Does Slack it have does. anything like that? It has a third party gamification bot. So Slack itself doesn't include it because Slack doesn't view itself as a community platform, but you can find the third party bot that adds gamification features. One thing we have done in Slack, um, which is which is really different than what Beanie is talking about, but um we at VMware we have like a shout outs channel, which uh where we encourage people to basically thank someone for for something awesome that they've they've done. And we could we could encourage people to, you know, in particular recognize other people who've done, you know, non especially non code contributions. But I suppose we could use it for everything, and just encourage people to to thank other people for doing good stuff there. These are great ideas. These are really really great ideas. As far as like tracking and. Um, I mean, surfacing and recognizing, I think, is separate from tracking. So does anybody have ideas on how we can better track those contributions? And like, you know, trends over time, like, oh, we have, we're, we don't have as many people helping with events as we did last year. So maybe we need to focus on building that team out more. That's what I'm kind of talking about. Like, how, like just like we would with regular code contributions, make sure you have enough contributors to kind of sustain but like that's only for the code. So how do I track these non-code contributions so that I know I have teams or people working on things that are keep it sustainable, these little mini projects that we have? Because we have so many, so many in chaos. I know Grimoire Lab tracks a lot of stuff that's not not necessarily code. Like, you know, you can put in stuff from from Slack and other other tools. Um Honestly, I haven't looked at that part of uh, Grammar Lab for a while because I think we're mostly using it at VMware for code contributions. But I'd be curious maybe to talk to that team and see see what they have and see if there's anything maybe interesting that they could uh, that they could come up with that might be based on some other stuff that they've done. Do you feel that these two things, Elizabeth, are 
like something that would occur concurrently. So like surfacing and tracking, or um, is there a reason that you want to track or only want to surface, you know, like what? I definitely want to do both. Okay. Um, I think they are separate, um, but I definitely want to do both if we can, because I think they're both important. Mm -hmm. And again, the only reason to kind of track these contributions is to have a better insight of, um, A, who's, who's kind of working on what, and also do we have enough folks to sustain a, a mini project within the pro within, within chaos, for instance, an event or um, like the badging website or the badging program. Like I do that stuff manually. Well, I do the badgers manually, but it would be great if if not everything was manual, <laughs> it was manual. Maybe it has to be. I don't know. Maybe it should be. Um, or maybe it comes down to we have many team leaders that track like they take it on themselves to track and, and who's on the team and who's active and like all of that. And then just kind of report back and we keep like a high level look. Um, I don't know. But I do know as our community grows and as more and more of our contributions are not necessarily code related, I think it's something that we should address and try to solve if we can at least move us off of where we are now, move, move ahead. I'd be, I'd be really interested to hear what um, folks from the Chaos Africa community think about this as well. Um, just if there's any thoughts about how maybe that is already occurring in Chaos Africa. You know, maybe chat with Ruth or Mary Blessing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like too, at one point, Ruth had started a doc just a doc that um, kind of just kept a list of people's names. And then it was kind of like the Drupal idea of where, where if you've contributed something, submit a PR to add your name to the list. And then it does get counted in, in that way and through the GitHub API. Um, so maybe it's something similar to that we end up doing. Um, from, from my perspective, it seems like surfacing, the like recognizing, seems a bit easier at the moment. Something that could be built out in these variety of different ways today. Tracking seems a little bit more complicated to me. Not to not do it, but would probably require a bit more work and a bit more thought. I, I honestly kind of disagree um, because I think that a lot of these features require metadata, not anything more complex than that, really. So if we can implement for our tracking, like user specific kudos features where a specific emoji is tracked, uh, if we can use like specific categories and hashtags on posts, we can identify which categories and hashtags are coding versus non-coding. Um, we can also use bot features, like you were talking about a shoutouts channel. Instead of doing a shoutouts channel, you can have a reporting channel for anything that people plus one or do something like that. Then the slash command will just post it into that channel. So it's more community oriented. So it's not about Elizabeth shouting things out. It's about users doing it naturally. And then it just shows up in that channel. So there's a lot of options that we have because that channel is basically just collecting awesome stuff people have done. And Elizabeth can just pop in there before each newsletter, grab a random one, and then highlight it on the email. These are all measurable. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um... Hey, Don, I have a quick question about that shout outs channel. Is it is it anybody can just jump in and, and do a shout out? It doesn't have to be a certain set of people, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's designed for for people to, you know, to recognize their colleagues for something that interesting they've done. 
I think a better way to do that would be to make it into a slash command. So you could actually have a user put slash kudos and it launches like a random GIF emoji and they're doing it in stream and then it will simply automatically post to that channel. Oh, that would be cool for sure. Because it's one thing to ask someone to go to another channel to do a shout out. It's another thing for that shout out to occur in the stream and still be findable. Mm -hmm. I can look into that too. If that's already written somewhere, I would rather just grab that instead of writing it myself. <laughs> from yeah. scratch. I, I already put it down. Um, so it's oh, the okay. idea there for slash command. So if you just, yeah, here it is. I would make this a slash command instead of instead called slash kudos oh. and deliver it as a community focused stream. Okay, I'll look into that for sure. I, I really, really like that. I think that's a pretty low hanging fruit to start recognizing folks a little more. Yeah. Um, you know, because honestly, the when I I choose the chaotic of the week based on things that I see, but I don't see everything. You know, and so I that's why I'm kind of like, what am I missing? What what are what's happening? Like who who are the people in the newcomers channel, for instance, who consistently welcome other newcomers that I'm not seeing because I I missed it. You know, and like that that's what I want to surface. I want to make sure that we are appreciating and recognizing the folks that are doing good work that maybe doesn't always get seen. So yeah, I really like um, that a lot. Kind of meta to this discussion. Um Chaos is definitely dealing with um, a lot of burdens of growth, um, specifically when it comes to the burden of attribution, uh, which is as discussions and conversations get larger and larger and larger, individual contributions become harder to manage and understand. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about. Um, so adding some structure that allows us to compile those automatically is going to require that we offload that work from Elizabeth. And the easiest way to do that is automations. But the second easiest way to do that, and something that I think we should consider, is actually establishing additional admins. So a community team that Elizabeth can coordinate as admins for the Slack and the Discourse channel. These are all excellent ideas. Um, I, I love you all. You're amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate everyone's opinions and insights and ideas. Um, happy to keep continuing this conversation um, in whatever channel would make the most sense. I don't know. Um, I guess general, maybe. I don't know. But um, I think it's something like if we can, you know, really put Try some things and see what works for our community. I, I think that's things that you know we could also share with other open source communities, even though we are a little different than your your typical software <laughs> software project. But I think um, these are hard problems to solve, and it's not just us that struggles with them. I think others struggle too. So, yeah, I love you all. Thank you so much. What else? Um, what else do we have to talk about today? I don't. I don't even know. Anything else on people's minds? We have a little bit of time. We have 13 minutes. Um, I think probably did Benny, did you put this down in here? The community okay. We we did just move to async. So I, I mean we didn't disband completely, but we just took the meeting off the calendar, <laughs> the sync meeting off the calendar. Um, but we're, you know, we can still work async. That's probably easiest for you, maybe also to not have to have that regular kind of commitment and burden on your calendars every, every day, every week. Yeah, I will say, so for those who don't know, we, we had a communications working group that, um, we worked on for quite a while and then it just we just all got busy and so we said you know let's um let's just go async but um yes i've been using co-schedule that is what i use exclusively so yeah it's awesome i appreciate it they died wait what oh yeah yeah um uh they're going to be moving into wind up oh no um it's it, they brought back the twitter integration 
and it wasn't enough to bring their customers back. Mm -hmm. So they've had a pretty significant reduction in user base. So I don't know what they're going to do, but um, there are now better tools um, in the wake of that. I don't know. We'll discuss it. I still really like CoSchedule, but it's struggling. <laughs> Great. So now Elizabeth's going to have to learn a new tool. Another one. Oh no. It'll be a new same tool. So okay. I, I I've that. already done a lot of research on it okay, because good. I need to switch myself. So we'll right. get there. Okay. Well, we can talk about it in the communications channel, but um, yeah, I appreciate that heads up because I did not know that. So Whoa. all right. Anything else we want to talk about? We got 10 more minutes. The floor is yours. Oh, bless you, Don. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hit the mute button in time. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> All right. Well, um, everyone gets an extra 10 minutes back in their day to go do whatever you want. You can just do a little dance party. You can go outside. You can have a cup of coffee, whatever um, would be the best for you to reclaim your 10 minutes. Thank you again to everyone who came, especially our new faces. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're really happy to see you. Hopefully we'll see you here again um, next week, same time, same place. And we'll see you later on. Take Thanks care. Thanks so Bye. much to the folks in Kiosk Africa. That was so amazing. I enjoyed it. Yes, I loved that video. It makes me so happy. See you later, everyone. <laughs>